This is the Pioneer Cemetery in Port Axbury, Nova Scotia, and it's the restoration project for the summer of uh, 2010. Just giving you kind of an overview of what the cemetery looks uh, as of this date, June the uh, 18th, 2010. Much of the work has been done in moving field stones. Field stones are grave markers that uh, do not have any uh, writing on them, they just mark a grave, which they did uh, a uh, hundred plus years ago in a lot of cases families couldn't afford or uh, didn't have the means to uh, buy a gravestone or have one made these are the field stones that were taken from the grave there's approximately a hundred in this pile they're just flat stones a, uh, a stone like this for example would have been upright but would only have been showing about an inch off the top of the rock because after a hundred years they've uh, sunken uh, quite far into the ground as you can appreciate so there's the stones are of various sizes the common factor of course is the uh, fact that they're basically all flat this uh, pioneer cemetery is what we call it uh, has uh, graves in it dating from 1832 to 19 09 on property donated by the Paint family. This uh, large monument is that of the Paint family. Uh, Nicholas Paint, who was a, uh, an industrialist, uh, died in the U.S. Uh, of uh, cholera and his family uh, members mark uh, a place where some were laid to rest with this uh, marble stone. One of the nicer ones in the graveyard one of the nicer ones from that day you can see we've moved some of the stones around marked the graves and then moved the, uh, the stones around so we could restore the graveyard to a point where it can be kept up for the next 50 years or so here's one of the uh, stones that is intact it's a Jane Martell she died back in 1851 so from this perspective this is what the graveyard looks like Again, uh, many of the official headstones have uh, fallen down, knocked over, and broken. So the plan is to restore all of those headstones and hopefully bring them upright. And also to replace any field stones that we've uh, taken out. This is another one of the stones that the base cannot be found for. But it is here, and we'll put that back to where it belongs. See, we marked the rows of uh, stones with these uh, sticks and numbers so we know where what we're dealing with once we get the ground leveled out and back to where it should be. Here's another one of those stones, Eliza or Louisa Grant. Is the name on this one and this one is marked like this there's a number of the official headstones back in this the very back end of the uh, off the graveyard such as this one here which is Annie Reynolds you can see the name there and uh, she died back in 1892 I think it was Something close to that. We have official records as well, besides the uh, these here. Records have been kept over the years for most of what we could identify in the graveyard. This is a monument for the Langley family. As you can see, it's in a few pieces, but we'll hopefully get all that put back together. This one is for Margaret Langley. This one here is another uh, very nice stone for the in good shape and this is uh, Adolphus Embry Susan and Charlotte as well and uh, he died back in 1883 Annie and I believe that's Annie Reynolds you can see the different condition of the stone uh, part of that stone of course was down on the ground and the rest of it was uh, kind of weather beaten this one here is uh, 
Thomas Evans. The base is there and pieces of the stone which we should be able to put back together, hopefully, completely. And we also have another one right here, right at number six. And this one belongs to George, and I believe the name is George Reynolds on this one. Again, a number of pieces on that. We have the large monument for uh, George Reynolds, as you can see. I'm able to uh, restore this, Did some work on the bottom of uh, it to level it off so that it is secure. Uh, 100 years will do a lot of damage to a stone, but as you can see, this is, I believe, made of sandstone and it's in relatively good condition. Uh, we'll have to clean it up a little bit. Uh, George Reynolds was 68 when he died back in 1877. Directly behind this stone, we have three other markers that can be read. This one of uh, Ellen who was the daughter of John and Jane Davis, who uh, died in 1884, just nine years of age. And this one here, which does not have a base, but we're still looking for it, uh, of Mary Lee. I believe the death is 1824. This was known as the Baptist Cemetery, this side of it here. And over here, there is the Embry Cemetery, with only one official grave marked, but 15 others that were unmarked. This marks the grave site of several of the Embry family. Isaiah Embry and wife Rhoda. Isaiah died in 1886 and Rhoda in 1906. And you can see their names. And Sarah, who died in 1904. A beautiful wrought iron fence, which will be restored.